Hey guys, welcome to another video from Historic Militaria. Today we're going to be looking at a pretty unusual grenade that is not seen that often these days. This is a Model 1917 Russian gas grenade. And these were used during World War I and after uh, to sort of clear out trenches or pillboxes or bunkers and whatnot and get enemy soldiers out into the open where they could be dealt with with small arms or artillery fire. Um, this was filled with something called chloropicrin, about 500 grams of it, so just about 16 ounces of it. It was actually a liquid that would go here in the head, and it was actually filled through this hole here, and then there would have been a plug there. There's no longer the plug, but it would have had it. And then your detonator would be a U-shaped device that would go here and connect down to this hole here. Um, obviously, this is not a complete example, does not have that detonator, but uh, kind of gives you an idea of what it would have looked like. So you'd have the detonator coming down, going across, and then coming into here. Now, for all the simplicity that Russians enjoyed uh, putting into their weapons, this is not a particularly simple grenade to use. Uh, for one thing, to use it, uh, it would have had a ring here, which would have kept your handle depressed uh, for, for safety. And we'll get to why in just a second here. So to use this thing, you would have had your filling in the head here. You would install your detonator before use by moving this wire out of the way. Install your detonator, put your wire back. Then you would move this ring out of the way and it's it's pretty in there because this grenade is actually cocked right now you would move this this way out of the way you would pull this lever down depressing the spring-loaded firing pin which is actually in this tube right here so once this is out of the way you would move this down into its present position, which is cocked. And then holding that, you would then put this tab back across to lock it in place. And now your grenade would be armed and you'd be uh, ready to use it, sort of ready to use it. So to then actually use it, you would grasp your grenade. You would press in on that on this handle here, which is spring-loaded. And as you can see, there's these little grasping lugs, which will actually grasp onto the end of the firing pin there. And so when you're holding it like that, you then would actually slip this ring back toward us looking at it right now. And that would then and de-engage your safety, which is holding that in place. So the only thing then is holding it with the little arms here, because you're holding it, uh, you're holding the spring loaded lever in. Then you let it go, and this would snap up, and it would, the firing pin that is in there would actually come up and hit the base of the detonator starting the ignition chain and you would get rid of this thing as quick as possible because gas is going to be coming out now the gas that was in it is lethal in high doses but generally these would have been used by soldiers on the assault so you don't want a gas that is um, incapacitating in terms of like a nerve or blister agent so this is more akin to tear gas and uh, it wasn't really designed to to kill people or incapacitate them to the point they're going to have to go to a field hospital it's just an irritant to get gas masks on and get them out of the vicinity the other interesting thing about this one is you've got your warning that it is a chemical grenade you've got your skull and crossbones and then you've got Russian for chemical on there. 
and that just sort of lets you know that this is nothing to fool with. And the only other marking I was able to find on this was a basic arsenal or manufacturer mark. And that's it. These are um, pretty unusual grenades. There's not a lot floating around. This is not, as I said, a complete example, but it's about as complete as you're gonna find. Uh, as far as operational use, I know the Germans actually captured quite a few of these in World War I, and as I understand, they were used to a limited degree in World War II, although I really can't confirm that, so if you know more about that, I'd love to hear it in the comments. If you've got one of these that is more complete, I'd also love to hear about that, and uh, just hope you enjoy taking a look at an unusual grenade that you do not see very often. And just to give you an idea, as a last thing, we'll try and make this go off one-handed. So pull that, push that in, push that in, and this ring is actually pretty, pretty tight in there. That's not going to happen. But the, trust me, this snaps back with quite a bit of force, and there is that firing pin in there. So it's a pretty complicated grenade, but a pretty interesting one. And again, if you enjoy what you're seeing, like, subscribe, and uh, take a look at the other videos, and we'll be doing more. Thanks for watching.